Good evening everyone, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV and this is the OC show, your overclocking show. Every week we discuss the latest news of hardware and everything going on in the industry. Tonight I'm joined by two of the regular guests, that's Bilzoid and Tullius. What's up guys? How's it going? <laughs> All good. good. Uh, we are a little bit early from the uh, usual time uh, here on Twitch, but we're a little bit late because of Tudius that was stuck in traffic at 2 a.m. But, well, that's uh, that's what happened, you know, that's, uh, that, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of doing live things, always like this. Uh, let's dive in, into all the different topics we have this week, quite a few uh, things going on, and it's Black Friday, so we're going to talk about some of the nice... Uh, deal on the benchmark side that we have. Uh, before starting in, uh, competition update. Tullius, what's going on with the Rookie Rumble? Well, um, so uh, the the Intel round and the AMD round both are running. It's uh, Rookie Rumble number number 50. Um, right now, we have 151 overclockers on the Intel side, um, you know, and it's 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 looking pretty close. The, the competition is fierce, at least for the first three places. Actually, no. For the first five places, it's actually pretty fierce. So they, you, you could very easily see, um, you know, people uh, swap places. But looking very, very interesting with a lot of activity. And we've been saying this uh, throughout, throughout pretty much the whole season on on the OC show. It's 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 that it's very heartening to see so many new overclockers every single every single rookie number taking part. You know, it's 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 just a very heartening thing to see that uh, there's there's constantly there's fresh blood. There's there's new people who, you know, are very interested and want to learn and get get better at overclocking. So, all in all, lovely. It's just very nice to see. And then, uh, of course, we have the uh, Rookie Rumble AMD number 44. Now, that doesn't have too many people in there right now, but that could change. There's still 14 days, and I say this every single time we do this. I mean, right now, you've got points for competing. It's literally free. Yeah, it's, free it's, like, it's like free access to a competition point. That's, uh, that's quite... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite fun. Uh, so, on, yeah. on the on the country cup side, uh, what's going on? Who is leading now? Um, on the country cup side, we have basically we've got well, you, the United States. They've not nobody's been able to you know kind of kind of push them out out of this spot. And the lead's pretty pretty significant. So they're at two hundred and fourteen points overall. And then Ukraine, which is in the second position, is at one hundred and fifty six. So that's that's quite the lead. Um, dethroning. Um, the United States at this point, I think, is looking tough. I mean, there's still lots of time to go. There's 28 days to go, so anything could happen. Uh, the Czech Republic, I'm hinting at Alza and crew. Because they've got some really, really top overclockers right there. I mean, if... if uh, <laughs> Czech Republic? Like, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the Alza team does, the Czech Republic doesn't. <laughs> But no, it's like, so far, it looks like we might actually be able to at least cover all the hardware for each category, which for some of these is kind of hard. So, yeah, but I, I don't think we're going to even like hold top three. I, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think finishing top 10 would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, well. Set your goals low enough and you'll achieve them. <laughs> I, I, you will overachieve then. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so far, there's 35 countries being involved in the Country Cup. So if you are part of your country, that's the that's the time to actually chip in. There's still 23 days. Um, just go submit your stuff before uh, December 23rd. So that's going to be just before Christmas time. Uh, would be fun to see who is a winner and getting out of this Country Cup 2017. Uh, on the other side of all the top scores that were broken since the last OC show, um, there was one thing that I wanted to um, to pinpoint was about Kingpin. He uh, dropped some single GPU global first place. Uh, he was using the VGA 1080 Ti Kingpin Edition, obviously, and the yep. uh, EVGA X290 uh, Black. So that's the motherboard, uh, the EVGA motherboard. It's not right, released black? yet. Isn't it dark? Uh, dark, dark, dark. G Why did I say yeah. black? Yeah, dark. Well, it's, it, it's black, but it's called dark. And <laughs> and of course, the uh, Intel Core 97980XE, so the 18-core CPU from Intel. And out of the three single 
uh, GPU global first place that he achieved, there was 3D Mark 11 performance at uh, a little bit above than 40, uh, 47k, so 4783 points. Uh, 3D Mark Fire Strike at 36,935 points, and 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme uh, just a little bit over 20k, so at 20 uh, 20,051 points. So that's a uh, Nice stuff to see by uh, by Vince. He's still in the in the game. He's not moving out uh, anytime soon. So that's uh, good to see him pushing uh, pushing all that. And I I suspect that that's the extra scores he did after he went to see uh, Jace to send. Yeah. So I, I guess that's so. uh, that's a score from the preparation and some of the uh, of the, um, the the sandbagging thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's quite possibly more in the tank. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this could be also for, like, because the GOC is coming right up. Yeah. Very soon. And, like, I mean, it's been done before where people would drop, like, huge scores right as a big competition is coming up. But to make it then, really hard for anybody at that competition to actually <laughs> do anything impressive. <laughs> Just like, oh, you thought you were going to be getting world records. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sandbagging is uh, one of the big... Uh... One it's of the one of the fine things. arts. Yeah, actually, <laughs> let's see if Australia is sent bagging in the Country Cup. That would be right, pretty that's a question. <laughs> yeah, oh, let's no. see. Okay, okay, they will send back for <laughs> sure. But let's see if they can get back to the top even with send bagging. Isn't that the whole bloody point? <laughs> yeah, but you don't know if other <laughs> countries start top? doing it as well. True. Yeah, we've got. We've I, got... I, well, I'm not sandbagging. I've just legitimately not managed to actually bench all the other stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. we've got. I need to get a move on, because I, I still need to like I, I need to do a bunch of those stages. <laughs> well, you still have two weeks, so like, yeah. like three weeks, three weeks from now. And <laughs> there's actually a good comment like terrible prison, terrible price. At least our overclo our overclockers do not suck. You have only like it's four just because or five you have serious the... overclockers. That's yeah. the main problem, and that competition requires eight people for stage one. Yeah, but it's good. Like... I mean, it forces people to uh, to work as a team as well. So this is good to have. Yeah, it forces people right. from the team to hunt down somebody who has the right hardware or doesn't even have it, and it's just like, okay, you're gonna use this CPU, this motherboard, and you're gonna <laughs> post. <laughs> but it's good that it's you cannot do that with the exact same platform. It's not like you cannot have eight well, yeah, core with the exact same platform. So you need to have different hardware. hardware and, yeah. So yeah, hardware sharing is a, is not an issue in here, which is good. Which is good, especially for sandbagging and number of scores. Well, or, I mean, I could technically loan out to like a Fury X and then bench a Vega myself, but <laughs> that would actually fall because you know I'm not benching that Fury X. Someone else is. <laughs> it's yeah, my that, Fury that, X. that's borderline. Yeah, that's that is really borderline, but and it's and it's not quite fair. Like I wouldn't actually do that, mostly for fear of losing my Fury X. <laughs> 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 like some of these cards, like there's one of them at this point where I'm like, okay, this thing's gonna die, and I'm gonna kill it in like a month or something because it's not looking very good for it. Um, <laughs> hopefully, I manage to run four way before I do that. Those right way to work on a card. Yeah, that's... Uh... Now, that card has just gone through hell and back. Like, literally hell and back. <laughs> it, it, it's you, like, did you solder stuff back on it as well? Card. Oh, and guess what? There's vault mods in store for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's like it's barely working at this point. And I'm like, you know what this needs? Mods. <laughs> More mods. <laughs> um... All right. Um, what's going on in the uh, in the other kind of competition? There's the GOC going on this weekend in Thailand. Bizzo, do you have more information about that? Well, it's a big um, overclocking competition. It's actually the GOC stands for Galax Overclocking Carnival. Carnival? I think. Yeah, yeah. Carnival. Yeah. Which actually having Galax GOC <laughs> is kind of redundant, but. Um, it is a big competition that they're holding now, I think, yearly. Um, yep. They've had one last year and before last year. Um, it's been a while. It's, very... been, uh, it's been a good like, four or five years now. Yeah. Well, I've not really been keeping up how long they had. They, they've been doing it for. But it is a really awesome uh, competition. It's very focused on GPUs because Galax is obviously a GPU uh, vendor. 
Uh, and this year, it's entirely focused around the GTX 1080 Ti Hall of Fame edition, um, the special OC Lab version of the Hall of Fame card. Like, like so, the, the, you know, the only the, the, 1080 you can buy that doesn't have a cooler on it. Yeah, it, well, yeah. it comes with a water block in the box, but yeah, you do get it without a heatsink uh, <laughs> installed because, well, it's meant to literally go from out of the box straight onto LN2. Um, and the benchmarks are Geekbench 3 multi-core, so that's like the only non-GPU benchmark. And then the other two benchmarks are 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. Well, three benchmarks. 3D Mark Time Spy and GPU Pi 1 billion. So Geekbench 3 multi-core, you know, um, the CPU being used is going to be a 7740X provided by Galax. Um, for Geekbench 3 multi-core, it's actually limited to 6 gigahertz. Uh, and the reason for this is, is Galax actually makes memory. So um, that Geekbench 3 multi-core stage is basically going to be focused around memory overclocking since it is uh, locked to 6 gigahertz, and it basically allows Galax to show off what their uh, memory kits are capable of in terms of overclocking for Geekbench 3, because that is a pretty memory-intensive benchmark. Then you have 3D Mark Times by Extreme, which is a very, very heavy GPU test. The 7740X is honestly, like, not really that relevant, as they are only focusing on the GPU score there. Same for 3D Mark Time Spy, um, except slightly less heavy than Time Spy Extreme, because Time Spy Extreme runs at, I, have, I believe, 4K. Um, the render is 4K. It's not, it is not displaying yeah, 4K, but the render is 4K, 4K. And then displays downscaled yeah. to fit screen resolution. But it is a 4K workload. Um, yes, it is. And then you have the usual 3D Mark Time Spy, and then finally you have GPU Pi 1 billion, uh, GPU Pi 1 billion should be, I, I think that one will be interesting to just see how high the clocks can get. Because GPU Pi 1 billion is uh, entirely GPU based. GPU. It doesn't use the yeah. CPU basically yeah. at all, as long as there's a CPU in the system capable of like starting Booting. an OpenCL yeah. runtime in a run. <laughs> um, and it is a relatively light workload, so you can get some ridiculously high uh, GPU clocks to run yeah. on GPU Pi 1 billion. Like, Last year, we saw 1060s breaking three, uh, touching three, three gigahertz for GPU yeah. Pi. Um, so we might see three gigahertz 1080 Ti's this year, which would be ridiculous because that's you know much much bigger chip, much higher powered consumption. Admittedly, a GPU Pi is not going to be that high, but compared to something like Time Spy, but it will still be interesting to see just how high the cards can clock on something that isn't just desktop idle. Yeah. So. Yeah, it looks like a really good lineup uh, in terms yeah, of benchmarks. Uh, yeah, and there's uh, twelve thousand dollars to uh, to win up for grabs. Five uh, k for the first one, four uh, k for the second one, three k for the third one, and there is uh, three thousand USD for grabs for anyone that break an official world record during the any of the days match. I don't know if they it have to stay for a certain time, but. Uh, yeah, if no, they break... just in case Kingpin just yeah 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 it's like in case sandbag. there's some people sandbagging. He's like, oh, you broke, you broke the 3D Mark Times fight sandbag. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I mean, if you have up for bounties, you need to have like this. It have to stay for at least like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> kind of things, but I'm pretty sure that. So, um... so actually, before you upload the score, you'd be like, okay, when is Kingpin most likely to be asleep? Sleep. Four a.m. in the morning. It's like, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> He does have a kid that is very young, so he still needs to take care of it. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. How long is his uh, commute between work and home? Hmm. <laughs> How long before my score gets taken down? <laughs> yeah. Or you have like the uh, the auto send back bot that post scores automatically for you if someone like <laughs> <laughs> sandbag boy. next level sandbagging yeah. <laughs> oh my god so yeah and there's uh, 3000 USD up for grabs for anyone that break the world record as well uh, what I expect to have is to have some of the overclockers to bench together and share the bounty uh, like uh, that happened in the past years so for example like two or three overclockers just get together, uh, they each test their card, and then they move uh, to actually do like a, like a I mean, SLI a... four-way system just for breaking the, the record and getting the cash, and then splitting the cash in between them. There is sense. a, like, Dan Kopp's just saying on the chat that, like, without the 18 core, it's impossible to break any world records. 
Um, Maybe someone wrote these 18 core. Don't they have a freestyle portion? Yeah. Maybe I'm some of them sure wrote their own CPU. Section, and, so they'll, they'll be able to bring, like, after the main sort of competition event, they'll be benching whatever the hell they bring, I think. Even so, last year, I think they made, like, teams and people went at it together, right? Like, multiple yeah. players got together. Yeah, yeah. And also, and the 7740X would be competitive for some benchmarks, like Unigen. Um, what else is there? GPU Pi, because <laughs> we don't need the CPU. Uh, some legacy 3D, um, but I'm not really sure if they would really focus on that that much. Uh, no, uh -huh. there's no Australian there, so they won't focus too much. I mean, there's Bob NZ, but he's uh, by himself, so that's not going to... That's not gonna. Be you need the whole of a, a team AU. Yeah, the whole like team AU is not there. So three Marco one, that's not gonna be this one this weekend. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, in terms of overclockers, uh, OGS from Greece, Doctor Wiz from South Africa. Uh, actually, Doctor Wiz is posting update on his Facebook page. Uh, so if you want so to, did complain about only having two gigs of data for the yeah. entire trip. So, so that means no live. Sadly. No live. Well, he did yeah. say he wants to upload at least a tour of the event. Yeah. So well, that, that's cool. I mean, uh, especially for him, it was hard to uh, to qualify. So he had he had, oh, uh, yeah. he had he had a lot of troubles to qualify and things. And he got a and he had a kid earlier and he got married earlier. So that was like a lot of things that got uh, that got all together at the same place for him and still get qualified. So that's very good. I can't wait to see what he will uh, because that's this. And then we have the uh, there's the OCWC in two weeks from now, three weeks from now. So that's going to be uh, like almost back to back for the competitions. Uh, so OGS from Greece, Dr. Wiz from South Africa, Bob NZ from Australia. We're talking just about him before. Uh, Hiki from Japan, Phil from Greece as well. Uh, Dogna from Japan. So two Japanese guys in the uh, in, in there and two Greek guys. Uh, Alex from Romania, Ersanino from Italy, which is actually competing for uh, best overclocker in the world against Danskop. He's currently number two. Uh, Bull Shooter from Germany, Mika in China, Zero Dan in China, and B Boy Jess uh, Indonesia from the Jagat OC crowd. Oof. So that's uh, that's quite something. That's uh, very impressive. I we'll see. Uh, there's no live show. I mean, I'm obviously not there. Uh, I don't know if there's planning to have any uh, live stream from uh, from Thailand. So we'll see this weekend if, uh, if there's something uh, there. If there's something, we might actually just uh, jump in and, uh, and see what's going on there. Um, yeah, uh I just wish there was a live stream. I mean, like yeah, me too, game. man. Honestly, I, I really wish there was something. But uh, the place is not the same as usual because usually it's in uh, Wuhan in China. Yeah. And uh, that that time, uh, there's no way anyone can do anything in China this year because they have like this uh, um, huge celebration. So during, yeah, they have a lot of uh, celebration and things. So they moved that to Bangkok in Thailand, which is good. I hope that uh, because it's it's easier for the internet, it's easier for uh, I guess price wise. I guess that's a little bit different as well. So there's uh, quite a few different things to uh, to to keep in mind and account for that. So yeah, best of luck for all the overclickers there. I I I have to say I did vote for Doctor Wish to win, but I'm not sure I, I will be able to do it. But that's. Uh, <laughs> per personal opinion uh, on the live chat let us know who you did actually uh, vote for or want to support and see winning in the uh, in the GOC 2017 um, next topic Bill Zoid so it's Black Friday and that means Steam has a whole bunch of sales and some of those in sales include benchmarks like the ever popular 3D mark um, and that does include Time Spy um, so you know, you can get uh, 3D Mark and Fire Strike, Fire Strike Ultra, Extreme, Ice Storm. You know, all the 3D Mark benchmarks in that main package, um, and also you can actually get VR Mark um, in a bundle with that, and they're all discounted massively. So, very good deal if you're looking to pick up some 3D Mark. Uh, basically, pick up the 3D Mark benchmark suite. Um, like other honest, than that, honestly, for 20 bucks Canadian, uh, VR Mark, 3D Mark, and PC Mark 10, nah, just go for it. Yeah, true. I agree. I don't know how much it is for for you, Bilzo, in uh, in UK. Uh, or in Czech Corona if you haven't check. changed your currency yet. <laughs> no, no, I, I have it in UK. Um, it's eleven pounds for me here, for the three D Mark, PC Mark Ten, and VR Mark bundle. So it's not that well, bad. Honestly, I mean... it's like I don't know what PC Mark even does, so I would just get the three D Mark alone. 
Um, though 3D Mark plus VR Mark is actually like that's two that's two ninety nine, and the 3D Mark standalone is three forty four. So actually, buying the VR Mark bundle is more cost effective than buying 3D Mark alone, because <laughs> you know Steam pricing system. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they're very good at math. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's like if you buy any any games any other time of the year, you get basically get raped. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's other crazy. than just 3D Mark, uh, you can also pick up Catzilla, which is a like it's a heavy benchmark. Um, it's just not very well known. Um, it's kind of fun to watch. It has really obnoxious music, though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Godzilla, the, the key you can buy is for the 4K version, right? Um, well, you actually... So if you have the non-official Godzilla version, you can't even like save, like save score files without being connected to the internet or anything. So basically, I'd buy it just because it's like being able to because like yeah. my when I benchmark, I don't have internet hooked up, right? Same. So Same. it's like I need to be able to save to a flash stick or or the hard drive and then move that onto a system that's actually hooked up to the internet. So for that reason alone, I would get Catzilla. It also the free version of Catzilla only goes to the 720p preset. Yeah. Um, exactly. If you buy the full version, you get 1080p, 1440p, 4K. Um, all the different presets, and you get the ability to save. So, yeah, definitely worth getting that. All right. Uh, any other Steam sales you want to speak of, or that's the two main ones you wanted to uh, to highlight? That's the two main ones. Perfect. Awesome. So, uh, next news, and we are moving fast on actually the news today. We have to, uh, we're going to have time to discuss a little bit more by the end of the show. <coughs> Uh, everything else. Um, news from Overlay.live. Okay, I'm part of the Overlay.live the development team, just for you guys to know. Um, we an They announced today that now you can connect any Asus ROG motherboard to have the telemetry overlay. For, for everyone that doesn't know, Overlay.live, that's a platform that uh, helps enthusiasts and overclockers to display information from the hardware directly into the streams. Uh, that's what Dr. Wizard has been using for quite some time. Uh, that's what some of the overclockers like Wizardy as well uh, have been using. And uh, there's an open source library, so you can actually uh, develop that on Raspberry Pi and, uh, and things. But now we're able to decode and get the information from the Asus Republic of Gamer motherboards. That means not only, and, and get ready, not only the BIOS postcode, so when it's starting the, uh, you know, the, the debug LED that you have, you can actually have this display on your cell phone or display on the, on the web page or display directly on your live, which is, in my opinion, quite awesome. And you can also get, and I'm stoked about that one, I'm super excited. You can also get all the information like CPU ratio, CPU cache ratio, uh, base clock, CPU frequency, V core, uh, DRAM voltage, all that. You can actually access that as well. So basically, uh, it solves a lot of uh, a lot of concern and uh, challenges that, uh, that 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 appeared. So it's always difficult to access all this. We've been working very hard to uh, to make this uh, this possible for you guys. And uh, if I'm correct, you can actually just. Uh, get it there if uh, let me get back the price i never remember the exact uh, the exact pricing for it premium so yeah that should be uh, available very very soon i think that was supposed to be tomorrow or today i can't remember because i'm not actually uh, <coughs> not the one taking care of that but it, it, it's super super easy to um, to configure as well you basically just uh, plug it on the raspberry pi run the uh, run the app and that's it and it's all plug and play so if you have a raspberry pi and you want to and you have an uh, rog uh, motherboard just plug that to it um there's some question on the live chat no it's not ipmi ipmi is over the network uh, and it's a different set you need to have specific hardware on the boards to uh, to actually support that uh, this is actually it changed nothing on the board you don't have to solder anything on the board you don't have to uh no 
modify specific stuff on the board. You just plug. On it it the, basically um, just uses the ROG, uh, yeah, the ROG OC extension. panel yeah. connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we teamed up with the uh, with the company called Elmore Labs, and basically you can connect that directly to uh, the Tevo X2, which is the shield that is uh, uh, for the premium managed device. So you have a Raspberry Pi of your own, but you can actually just buy the shield where you have two thermal probes uh, for it, uh, two I2C connections, and two voltages uh, readers. But with this one, we actually have access to all the voltages that can be uh, actually displayed to the uh, to, to the um, the uh, ROG X uh, extension board. So that's uh, that's awesome, and that works with all the ROG board that have the extension. So uh, pretty. Uh, Which pretty I have happy. exactly one. <laughs> I have uh, quite a lot of them here, and it's pretty. I, I can't wait to have it because I don't have it. I don't have that at home yet. So I'm waiting to receive them uh, very very soon. But I do have the the shield with the temperature and the probes. I've been using that uh, for for quite some times already. So I can't wait to see uh, to see what's going on uh, for that. If you guys want to see the overlay.live platform work live, on Sunday we do a 1v1 match exhibition with uh, Mr. Mr. Tech QC, Carl, and Marco uh, Frenert, uh, two famous YouTubers from, uh, from, uh, from the Quebec area. And they will be doing 1v1 on uh, all in one water cooling and air, no LN2 because I don't have the, all the gears for, for two systems here. But we will be using the probes. And the overhead dot live systems to display information back on the live. So if you want to check it out, you can come on the on the Twitch TV Overclocking TV channel on Sunday. What do you guys think about it? That's because you, you didn't knew about that yet. So wh wh what do you think? Well, you had dropped hints in Taiwan, but yeah, I mean, this is it's it, 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 it's just amazing, amazing to actually see this come to life because until. Until like the product is ready and like you know exactly what it can do, it's it's very tough to actually imagine what the potential of the device is. But once you know you put it in, like it's here and that's basically it. So honestly, I think that this this should have come sooner. I know you guys have been damn busy like nailing this thing to perfection. But even from what you told me in uh, in Taiwan and even what. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I heard was that basically it's just as accurate as the fluke. It reacts just as fast. Uh, you know, it's already kind of pre-calibrated. So yeah, I mean, as a as a little pocket device, I think it's freaking awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on it and start using it myself. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, honestly I'm stoked. For that that project has been it's been insane. So it's very great. Uh, I don't. If, if you guys want to have more uh, idea on how to use it and all that, we might be doing a live sometimes in the next few uh, weeks when I, I will actually receive the, the device completely. But um, if you have any questions, uh, there's a lot of documentation available yet. Uh, there's a community forum coming as well, and there is a support channel. Uh, as there is a library for Node.js, uh, available on GitHub. Uh, basically, anyone can uh, you can already start developing to send your data if you want. It's not data. It's like send your sensor information. So if you have a little bit of electronic knowledge and a Raspberry Pi, just go for it. That's gonna save you a lot of things for a lot of um, troubles to just find out on how that's okay. How I can connect that. How I can get the, the everything is already taken care of. You just fire up the the device and send the code to it, and that's it. So that's uh, that's pretty and neat. Honestly, honestly, I just want to say it's just kudos, man, for keeping this open source. Like really, it w it would have been so easy to actually do this with like just a proprietary device, like you know what what you have there and keep it keep it closed. But just awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, well, thank you. And the fact is, open source. The open bench table is open source as well, and we proved yeah. we proved okay, to the industry success. that you can actually have a successful product and a successful service and a successful way of doing things even when you actually um, uh, have open source all, uh, all your system you just need to make sure that you have the the correct agreement for for commercial purpose and that and and that's it <coughs> and, and, and i saw the i saw the post about like the whole bunch of 3d printed parts for the obd uh, this was i think yesterday wasn't it where where like some, somebody came up with like a whole lineup of uh, custom 3D printed parts and extensions. Oh yeah, and stuff. yeah, true, true. Um, I was 
Okay, we're not supposed to talk about that in the show, but we can. Uh, basically, Timothée, when found out on Thingiverse, one of the guy I can't remember his name, I think it's uh, Osiris or, or, or Orimis Hardware, hey. uh, a German yeah. guy that made out a lot of the... Um, um, I'm going to say that, extension for the OBT, and basically, uh, Timothée went to the uh, to the hackerspace in Taipei and print them out to to check what's going on with them. It's like, are they working? Are they okay? Uh, is there optimization to do on it? And once that's going to be uh, tested, it will actually just add them back into the uh, to the community uh, side of the open bench table. And it should be compatible with all the OBT, even the Mini, because the Mini has the exact same 8 as the... Um, as the regular one, right? So even though right. that was made for the regular OBT, like the the open bench table, uh, the uh, OBT mini will be compatible with it. So I can't wait to see that. And and there is a support for Raspberry Pi on it, which is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> which is perfect with what was announced today. Oh, like a mounting bracket. So then you have a mounting Pi. bracket for the Raspberry Pi on the side of the bench table, on which you have all your probes and all your uh, data that you can send back to your overlay, or actually just watch them as a, as a monitoring things. That's um, honestly, it's it's very good. It's um, it's a lot of work, but uh, it pays off in the it pays off in the end. Uh, like solving solving the issue that uh, no one else and not even the industry wanted to tackle first. So that's good. All right, uh, glad you guys are excited for it. Uh, if you want more information, just let us uh, drop us uh, drop us a line on the below the videos or just check the link in the description if you're watching that on YouTube and uh, on Twitch. We can always uh, send us a whisper whisper. All right, uh, next news: Intel ditches BIOS support by 2020. Everyone is on the UEFI train. Yeah. Yep. So what we do have here is um, the BIOS was invented about 36 years ago. And technically in three years, should be dead. Should be. Uh, just, just to keep in mind, that should be for all the Intel-based systems that are 64 bits. But as of now, they don't announce anything that is not 64 bits anyway. So basically by 2020... Bye bye BIOS. Um, Bilzoid, do you have any support as well, huh? Because lots of old legacy devices, I think, will just stop working now. So, yeah, so the thing is, the BIOS will not stop about, is working. Like, is Windows Seven not going to work on this stuff? It's so, not going to work on this at all. So that and means that new mean stuff. Yeah, that means new hardware will not support BIOS because the there is one thing as well, like the UEFI we have today. Uh, that support the BIOS. Actually, on pretty much all the motherboards we have today, it's still the BIOS doing all the work. UEFI is yeah. just the the upfront thing for it. Yeah, it's um, the user interface basically. Interface. Yeah. So there's like different class and things. So I think slash zero to uh, to three. Uh, zero that's just BIOS, like legacy BIOS. Uh, two, it's mostly legacy BIOS, which just a uh, a hint of a UEFI. Oh, UEFI code in there. Yeah. yeah. So it's a UEFI things, but everything is BIOS underneath. Uh, class two, which is what we have today, it's either it's UEFI on top, but we do have BIOS or UEFI to uh, to control the things. But everyone is actually relying on the, doing through the BIOS. And UEFI class three and three plus, it's all UEFI, no BIOS runtime run or anything. So that's um, that's good to move to force everyone to move this way. Uh, but the issue is like uh, a lot of the things that we do today, for example, the postcode that we were just talking before with the over.live platform. So the postcode is actually taken care of by the BIOS today, yeah. by the BIOS part, not the UEFI thing. So like initializing the, initial, uh, initializing the CPU, the memory, the RAM, the, the GPU storage and all that's like, it have to work, worth thing. It seems that if your graphic card, so the the V BIOS, so the visual BIOS, like video card BIOS, does not support talking to UEFI, it won't work. That's basically all the GPU that were made before 2012. Yeah. Okay, come on, that's five years old. Okay, you're not supposed to... Yeah, but for yeah, all but anybody to... benching legacy, I mean, at least <laughs> like it forces people benching legacy to actually bench legacy. 
right? You, you can't just slap your old graphics card next to your modern, ridiculously overpowered CPU and plow through Aquamark or something. You know? Um, what you I actually have to... Troubleshooting. How the hell will I know where the hell it's stuck? <laughs> Give me my gun. I imagine uh, hopefully they'll come up with some kind of alternative to the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the initialization system <clears throat> is already taken care of in UEFI. It's just that most of the manufacturers don't have to actually spend a lot of time to move this way because there was no end date for it. They were all using the uh, Well, why CSM? would you bother changing what you're doing when you, it works? Especially yeah, when it costs you money to do, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, why spend dev time on changing your boards from BIOS to UEFI when Also, I guess, you works. know what happened? It'll be, it'll, I guess it'll just be like, you know, the, those new OLED displays on the Asus motherboards where it just says VG uh, RAM and then it like, so I guess it'll just say, okay, I'm stuck at RAM and that's it, RAM. <laughs> I mean, we've also had like the really basic like debug LEDs, which is like, yeah, oh, your yeah. RAM is not working, so this oh. LED lights up. True. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, like depending on the platform, I don't mind having that kind of stripped it's down success. troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really depends on the platform, because like on Z270, it's like if you're seeing a 55 or a 49 postcode, it means something very different from like a 3F. If you get a 3F, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a 55 or a 49, you can press the retry button a few times and it might work. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Which, if you're on that, like, memory, like, if you're on just the LED indicators, like, all three of those postcodes are just, like, memory error. Which is just like, well, um, well, well um, who knows? We we might not need any more postcode if we have something that can connect to it and give us the postcode as well. I mean, it it Maybe. might change the way we actually consume uh, part of this. Like well. how the data is. Uh, yeah, how yeah, the data is presented. transmitted. Yeah. License the shield to Intel right now. <laughs> I wish I could, man. I wish. I, you know what I wish is that Intel give me access to uh, UEFI and BIOS block code that everyone get from them so yeah. everyone is actually already compatible with it but yeah it doesn't work this way true, true. intel if you are watching please let me access that <laughs> <laughs> so and the the news broke down by uh anantec we always try to give back the credits to uh who say that so it's anton she um that actually broke the news about that Bill Zoed, you had a very nice uh, breakdown video this uh, this week, actually yesterday. Well, no, no. nice. Um. <laughs> it was. It's actually oh, interesting photos to watch. came in, and the first thing I was like, must do. <laughs> so yeah, um, I made a video about the Z three seventy X SOC Force LN two motherboard because you know. The more the more words you put in the name of a board, the the, the more better it is. But either way, this better. is another one of those, you know, special gigabyte non-retail MOBOs that, well, I suspect it's going to stay non-retail. This one looks a lot more retailable than some of the past ones I've seen. Like, uh, this one has the Z87 a proper cooler and, and huh? proper, th this one has proper cooler, proper finish. It doesn't feel yeah. like there's uh, wires hanging everywhere. So, and what um, be, well, and to be fair, no, it's like some of the other ones have also looked like relatively presentable, but like the Z170 SOC LN2 uh, didn't have, have heat sinks. There was no yeah. heat sinks and it had AM3 plus mounting holes. Yeah. So <laughs> that wasn't going to fly at retail, was it? Um, then there was things like the Z97 LN2, which they actually pushed retail. You could buy that board. There was yeah. like 200 of them. <laughs> so... But you could buy that one, and there was no mounting holes whatsoever in that one, which is just like, okay. I mean, your memory traces are more important than, you know, any kind of mounting hardware. Um, and then the Z87 LN2, I think, was the same deal. Um, and we've not had a Z270 LN2 board. So... That was uh, no Z270X SOC Force LN2 board, officially. I don't think they bothered after making the Z170. So. <laughs> like, if you had the Z170 one, that that one pretty much did everything they could have possibly wanted. And if it didn't, at that point, it was 
kind of a bit too late. I mean, they did release the the ITX Gaming 5 board, which was like, okay, we have the two memory slots, so the RM doesn't suck. Um, this is our, like, good memory overclocking motherboard for Z270. Um, admittedly, you know, it's an ITX board, and it had some limitations, so it didn't really compare to something like an Apex or an MOCF, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a disaster. Um, yeah. The... Like, I really hope they push this one retail. Because it literally, like, it's just like it needs one more heat sink over the A, uh, VAXGA the, the one, yeah. portion of the VRM. And, and they could push it retail. Because, like, it has a bunch of M.2 slots. Uh, it has an audio section. Which, to be fair, they have I don't think they've made a board where there wasn't an audio section. Um, and actually, some of the previous is, like, the Z170 SOC LN2 board. That one recycles its uh, lower half, I think, off of the Z170 SoC Force retail, the non-LN2 version. And so it actually had a really nice audio section because they just ripped it off of an existing board. Um, and it's so, easier. I mean, you don't have to reroute well, everything. Yeah, I mean, it's like if the only part you so, yeah. care about is fixing the memory trace layout and the VRM section, then, like, who the hell cares about the PCIe area and audio? Um Though I did ask, like, why couldn't they just not bother populating those things? But I guess, you know, it wouldn't boot if the audio section was completely missing. Um, or it would have just been a pain to redo the production line for that. Um, but even the, even uh, there's some benchmark that do need audio, like M Mikkel T says, yeah, like yeah. Heaven. Unigen audio. Heaven. Uh, PC Mark will need audio, stuff like this. So I'm not even sure you can sell a motherboard without audio to respect the, uh, the platform specs. I'm not even sure that's... Yeah, but I mean, when you allowed. put AM3 plus mounting hardware on your motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, like, yeah. The previous one did not add any uh, any mounting. Some any of, mounting holes at all. <laughs> uh, not all of them. Just one of them did not add any mounting whatsoever. Well, they didn't sell the other ones. No. Like, there was the Champion, but that's not a Dash LN2 edition. Right? Like, they had Indeed. the Sock Champion no. for X99, but that wasn't uh, a Dash LN2. Like uh, it's very, a, it's just LN2, not it's dash LN2. Really close, <laughs> close, yeah. Well, uh, Gigabyte changes if their boards are like dash force or dash LN2, and all the time. So it's just like I just keep the dash because usually there is a dash, and if there isn't a dash, who cares? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a really, it's a really cool board. It has the two memory slots. It's EATX. It's absolutely massive considering that there's only two memory slots. Um, there are voltage read points for literally everything. Um, like everything. Every single voltage on the motherboard, you can measure it. Uh, there is a bunch of buttons, a bunch of switches, really cool functionality. Some of it's pretty gigabyte specific. Like there's a switch for dual BIOS and single BIOS mode because if you have gigabyte boards in dual BIOS mode, basically they auto recover the BIOS, um, which, you know, if you're pushing some really unstable set settings, you'd actually want to disable that because the board might randomly wipe your primary BIOS because, hey, this hasn't posted in a long time. Something must be wrong. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it gets those kind of features. Uh, what was kind of interesting to me is there's actually in like a iGPU disable switch on the board, which is right. like, I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. Yeah. I, I, um, and they had a they, three position disable, switch for what I do they disable directly or just cut off the power delivery to the iGPU? Well, I don't think you can cut off the power delivery to the GPU because that voltage is used for some other parts of the CPU. If I remember, if I'm correct, like I'm not 100% certain about that, but I imagine that voltage isn't just for the GPU portion. It's going to be for something else as well. Um, and, like, the, the BIOS normally disables the iGPU anyway. Like, there's a software way to do that, so that switch could very easily just be like, hey, when posting, don't bother, you know, it pulls a flag that, hey, no matter what, don't pull the iGPU up, which is handy, because if you're uh, messing around with the, like, when, when you put some of the voltages on KB-like and also Coffee-like into uh, cold boot bug removal levels, those voltages also are like kill the iGPU in the process um, if yeah. the iGPU is enabled. So I guess, you know, that that I assume is the reason for the switch being there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of weird because if you as long as you have a dedicated card, the iGPU shouldn't try to initialize anyway. Um, but still really cool motherboard. I really hope Gigabyte pushes it retail. I doubt they would act. They'll actually do that. 
But like this one has this one's so close, right? There's M.2, there's audio, they have the proper LGA 1151 mounting holes. Um it just needs like one more heatsink. That's the only thing that was missing on the uh in the pictures I had was the VAXGA VRM heatsink. So yeah. And it, it's ridiculously o overbuilt, eight phase V core VRM, true eight phase V core VRM, which um, Gigabyte has been like on the uh, dash LN2 boards. They well, the Force uh, LN2 boards they've been pretty good about like really nice VRM sections. Not necessarily massive overkill, but you know um, enough to sustain the, the platform under any kind of condition. Are these IR? Um, yeah, it's all International Rectifier 3553. Gigabytes. Gigabyte have been using them for years. Like honestly, yeah. like there's even two power stages that Gigabyte likes. It's there's the 50 uh 3553 and there's the 3556. And they're actually yeah. interchangeable packages. Like they share if you make a motherboard for the 3556, the 3553 fits. Um though you usually like you know, that's if you're experimenting with like some high more high power layout and then you're like, oh, we don't actually need this much power, you can just straight downgrade to the 40 amp part instead of the 50 amp part. Um, I kind of wish Gigabyte used the 60 amp power stages more from IR, but hey, I mean, as long as the boards do what they're like, you know, there's a certain level of too much overkill and Gigabyte tends to be well within the, well, it won't catch on fire when running LN2, so <laughs> it does the job. Um, <laughs> Actually, you know, uh, your, your, suggestion of hey to just make the the top cooler to actually uh, make a retail board there's already the holes for it so yeah that's, that's exactly that's, that's why i'm like the, that, that heat sink has to be missing because there's mounting holes for it <laughs> so is that the first <laughs> motherboard we see that is on the z370x chipset uh, z370 chipsets that have only two memory slots on atx form factor um there's the apex I mean, yeah. that one's not released, ah, yeah. but no, it Clear exists. The FX. Well, actually, none of them are released yet, right? Yeah, that, that one's no. still uh, not yet released. We're still waiting for that one. Um, I'm actually, like, Z370 right now, in terms of overclocking motherboards, looks pretty bleak. Because I've not heard anything about ASRock planning an OC formula yet. I mean, I'm sure they have one in the works. I hope they have one in the works. It might not end up being on Z370, though. Because remember, they're supposed to be Z390. And it could very yeah. well be that they're just waiting for that to release. Maybe, maybe that's what yeah. they do. And if it's allegedly the same chipset, pretty much, just different kind of uh, of CPU and power delivery for the for the CPUs and CPU support, allegedly, uh, well, that could uh, that could be the reason they do all the development for that board and say, yeah, switch uh, that specific stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, there you uh, go. Gigabyte could very easily go and just slap the Z3 set, you know, change this one to Z390 one day and be like, yep, yeah, this is going retail now. Um, though I would love to see this thing, just like, because these are the LN2 boards from Gigabyte. These are really, really cool motherboards. It's just unfortunate that there's, uh, it, it's really hard to sell these, right? Like, you can't really sell them retail, so... Well, the thing is, if you sell that as someone like Gigabyte, you should actually sell them directly to the overclockers, not through the e-tailers. Because the e-tailers will be like, oh, no, there is no sales for it. Yeah, obviously. I mean, you sell them They're, on Amazon. Yeah. If I you mean, sell them on actually, Amazon, like, the overclockers will buy them. That's one thing I noticed with, like, the new Apex from the spec, just what we've seen released by Asus. Um, they added a 5 gig LAN port, which is, like, why is this on an overclocking board? Because right? it's, it's part of And now of you have the... that I.O. cover. And it's just like, more stupid crap for me to remove. But once <laughs> Why again, is that there? Features, like, uh, it's like I get network it. I, port I get and things, it. it's, it's part of the chipset. Don't don't remove them. It's completely useless. That's not going to change anything. That's just going to limit limit down. No, no. The like, they added an extra LAN port. Like, there's one from the chipset. And there's a second one from the board. There's a second uh, LAN controller on the motherboard. Kind of like an extra USB 3 port. It, it's just like, yeah, but it's like this is an extra <laughs> overclocking board. And the, the original Apex was kind of stripped down. It wasn't completely stripped down. But the new Apex, it's already looking like, okay, so we got the I.O. cover. We got the silly M.2 thing going on. 
There's RGB blood everywhere, which we already had before. Now we get an extra LAN port. So how how long before this basically ends up looking like a formula is kind of what I'm worried about. And the thing is, because I get that this is to like, you know, sell the board to normal people. But at the same time, for me, it just drives up the purchase cost, right? As an overclocker, I just want the board to have, like, I literally could not care less about the rest of the motherboard, except that it has the support for, like, four-way and a good VRM and good memory support and some of the overclocking buttons and switches that you need. Uh, and that's it. Oh, right? by the I, way, the uh, any, SOC Force was, LN2 does have uh, LEDs in the PCI Express slot. Oh, boy. Well, yeah, because they recycled it off of a different board. <laughs> That's probably based off of the, uh, actually, I, what probably I'm the Gaming 7. What no, I'm surprised, actually, no, though... I don't think they have a four-way capable board. I don't think so. Z370 gigabyte. The, 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 thing, the, thing I'm, the thing I'm very surprised of is if you, if you, I mean, I don't know if you talk about that in your video, or maybe I missed that out. Uh, they use 8-pin and 4-pin CPU, uh, CPU plugs, right? Yeah. Um, would that have any interest for them as they do a specific LN2 or C board to have two times eight pin? It depends on the platform. Z370. Like, well, honestly, I think Z370 should get with just an eight pin. Like even under full low. Well, maybe XTU m might be heavy enough that if you have like an 18 gauge wired power supply you might want to have that plus four part but if you're on a 16 gauge that eight pin is supposed to handle like easily almost you know 400 plus watts even Easy. though even though one day we might have eight core cpu allegedly well adding an eight pin onto a board is like the least difficult thing possible oh, yeah, <laughs> there's true, power true. planes up there it's just like that would take the least amount of board redesign possible unless it's like it's oh really no we cramped. have to restart everything from scratch <laughs> well if you were on like an itx board and you're trying to add an 8 pin on a completely cramped itx you might actually yeah. be like we're gonna uh, have to start over aren't we yeah <laughs> <laughs> everything needs to move now but on, like, they have plenty of space on that thing. It's EATX. It's huge. And there's so much empty space. Um, <laughs> Actually, speaking of moving, we have to move to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of moving, uh, Intel allegedly working on more CPUs rather than graphics studios. Yep. So that's basically we've got the desktop CPUs coming, we've got mobile CPUs coming. We've got, we've got, we've got all kinds of stuff coming with the the Radeon uh, Vega HBM2 G graphics core, and then of course Intel doing the CPU part. But but the main thing is that they're basically promoting this as you know using their embedded multi die interconnect or EMIB or whatever they call it. Uh, the, so the, so so the whole thing is that uh, extremely extremely low power high efficiency that's that's what they claim and uh, the link between the cpu and the uh, and the gpu core itself i think is still over pc express because the, the distance is too large but the hbm to the gpu and stuff like that i think has been just like built on top of this intel's embedded multi die interconnect thingy where they've just been able to literally become modular with what they want to put on the CPU and what they want to remove off the goddamn CPU. So it's a very modular approach. They can they can add and remove things as market as the market demands or as they feel like doing uh, different approach to building CPUs, but pretty cool, pretty cool from Intel. And the performance shouldn't be half as bad. I mean, if, we, if, if you can squeeze something like a GTX 1050 or in that range from just a simple CPU, it'll make mobile gaming and even like low end desktops it'll make uh to use yeah no, he's he's back his internet oh, okay, just okay. cut out a bit okay so we we missed the last few words from you okay um i mean i don't quite know where it cut out but yeah it's it so i it's basically their emib is only kind of, kind of connecting their hbm to the gpu core and then it's uh, the GPU and the CPU are actually connected via via 
some sort of PCI Express or something. There's no real interpreter or anything. So, like so, that, so. so according to the uh, according to the content on Fuzzilla, uh basically we will have so Intel CPU. So that's all for mobile. So from what we understood, that's all for mobile or constrained from factor. Um, especially right. uh, if the name, the code name is correct, it's called Palo Alto P22 and Palo Alto, we know yeah. that's Apple. So that's most likely be uh, most likely to be in uh, in new MacBook Pros or maybe uh, some of the other one. But we don't know that yet. It's not. It's just pure speculation uh, at this point. Um, we know as well that Intel will put HBM2 memory on the package. So that's yep. uh, that's a very fast uh, things to to get. No more stuff going into the the, the, the CPU and and things as well. And it's according to Fuzzilla, it's most likely to be a Vega core, a Vega core for it, and an H generation CPU. But that's from what we know as from now. And if according to them as well, as according, according to Fuzzilla, it's been a, a good two years, it's in the works, which would make sense. I mean, if you want to, uh, you cannot do that in like two weeks. It's not like someone woke yeah. up in the morning and like, yeah, I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. So, especially that, that, considering it's all been built on this uh, EMIB technology and everything, I'm sure this didn't come up. Yeah, that, uh, that had to take a lot of development time. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, there's that on one side. There's the infinity... I have fabric. infinity loop on the. I always have infinity loop in my mind, but it's infinity fabric. It's infinity. Yeah, it's the infinity fabric. But AMD's really, well, AMD's infinity fabric is like it. It's basically a really wide PCIe connection, right? If you look at what it's loosely based on, it's like a huge PCIe connection to go from CPU to CPU. Um, and well, anything else AMD could want to possibly hook up to it, because technically speaking, the current Vega cards, which I have one sitting on the desk behind me right there, um, the current Vega cards already have the Infinity Fabric built into the die. It's just not yeah. being used for anything. It's there, but you know they're not connecting a whole extra die to to. Well, I guess if they wanted to make a dual GPU Vega and burn your house down. Um, they would use the Infinity <laughs> Fabric to do it. <laughs> but yeah, um, AMD is basically planning to use Infinity Fabric to hook up everything. Um, the EMIB is basically just uh, Intel's alternative to the uh, to the uh, interposer yeah. that AMD uses, because that's very much, basically, that's just a hardware thing. It's not like Infinity Fabric is more software uh, protocol as well as some you know hardware in, uh, combined with that. But the EMIB is really about getting away from the expensive silicon interposers, and it really reduces the size of the package because the silicon interposer on like a Vega or a Fiji just lifts the entire core up a bit. And yeah. for something like an Ultrabook, that's the last thing you want to be doing. Exactly. This is all about going mobile, putting it in ultra low power devices, and making them even thinner. But the cool thing is that, I mean, if this can offer GDX 1050 type performance, according to Bud, uh, that would be pretty interesting from a, from a chip like this. I mean, mobile gaming and things like that. Agreed, medium to low settings, but it'll, it'll, yeah, this is, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And we all know Intel can't make an IGP, so, yeah. Well, we'll see what the, what the turns around with, with that. Actually, that's, I think it's cool that we get to, uh, some more um, some more links for that so that's uh some more like uh, not links because i'm doing stuff on the side as well uh more <laughs> more of the mix in between the different major player to actually uh build on the on on their own uh ip but on the ip of others as well i, I think it's good to have a better interconnection as well for the future so we maybe that's the way you know remember like back maybe two years from now there was some rumors going on that Intel wanted to kill the PCI Express. Yeah. Thing. So oh. maybe that's one of the way for them to say, we don't want to kill the PCI Express. That's where that came from. It's like, we want to have everything to be integrated. So then we don't Didn't need PCI like Express. Didn't NVIDIA anymore. get like really annoyed at Intel over that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That went out for like that, a good like four, Intel four wanted or five to... months. Because Intel, yeah, right. from right. Intel's side of the, the, the battle with the PCIe is like, well, we're basically... Because... Intel sells CPUs to data centers, right? 
NVIDIA sells GPUs to data centers. Now, wouldn't it be really funny if your Intel CPU wasn't able to actually connect to more than one NVIDIA card, right? <laughs> so even if you wanted to like replace, even if you wanted to go full GPU compute, right, you need at least one Intel CPU per card. Oh, yeah. Yeah. to run your data center, which from Intel's perspective, that's great. Right? We're making <laughs> yeah. truckloads of cash doing that. Unless, um, unless someone else then, uh, will provide yeah, but now a we cheap have AMD where they're like, yeah, uh, PCIe lanes. So many PCIe lanes. <laughs> so much, the best. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, Epic is looking at like 128 PCIe lines. Yeah. So yeah. In Intel now kind of doesn't have an option but just to accept that PCI, like massive PCIe connectivity is going to be a thing. Um, yeah, I mean, Jesus. Can you imagine like that? I mean, there was even in, in, the, in the middle, I think a couple of years ago, there were, you know, talks where Intel was like, dude, we want to like give up. Uh, we want to stop even giving, like, like selling CPUs. You, you should just go out. And like buy a motherboard that will come with a CPU that's already like stuck to it, and that's what you get. Right. Like, and that's just like, <laughs> yes. well, we'll yeah. see what turns out. Uh, turn out with that. All right, guys, uh, that's been uh, one hell of a show. I think uh, one last thing we have we have to and we have to talk about that, guys. We have to talk about that. Net neutrality is very important. Without that, we'll never be doing this. We'll never be oh, on yeah. Skype doing that. Well, and not in America. Well, the thing is, the FCC <laughs> will control most of the big companies that are in America and most of the stuff that we're using today. I mean, we use Skype. Okay, that was many yep. in the US. Uh, well, uh, I imagine there's a Skype Europe server. I hope there's still, a Skype Europe still, server. If, <laughs> I wouldn't put it... <laughs> Please still, tell me there's a Skype Europe. <laughs> that's, that's missing the point. The, the point here is, well, I guess is if you're watching this you. on Twitch, first of all, that was made possible because uh, the content distributed through the internet was treated equally for everyone. Uh, you didn't pay more for watching Twitch. You didn't pay more... To, you pay. You didn't pay more your internet service provider to watch Netflix. You pay Netflix to provide you the content, but you don't pay for extra content delivery from your ISP because it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's not my content, so I want you to pay more for it. Yeah, I mean, you want to get packages for what websites you can visit. That's what they want. They're like, oh, you paid fifty dollars, you can only visit these five well, websites. But they more, wouldn't even need to go as far as like outright blocking you. It's basically they'll just give you like a fast lane. So it's like, oh, yeah, uh, you want yeah. a package where no, you can no, no, actually no. load it's anything but giving Facebook everyone ads. else a slow lane. Yeah. yeah, it's basically like so you go to our approved websites, you get whatever download speed you paid for. You go to any other site, and it runs at like and one kilobyte per second over. because screw you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and we know that. Uh, basically, we know it that if. It's not and loading fast. The thing you're is, not gonna go there anymore anyway. If you're watching, yeah. if you're watching, for example, on Vimeo or on Daily Motion, Daily Motion was the biggest uh, proof that it was actually big, hurting them very bad. They had no cache server in the US for quite some time. They had no cache server in Asia for quite some time. They had almost no reach there because no one could watch the video without actually loading up the thing. So that, that all that and uh, like the telemetry thing we're doing with overlay.live, that's something that can get that can get hurt too as well. I mean, that's from my side, I, I'm either on I'm on both sides, like from the user perspective and from the service provider perspective as well. And yeah, you, and can, the, can you the, think about what the content creators and people who like depend on the livelihoods of the internet are are actually going to go through? I mean, there's there's a, there's a, it's a very good chance that people might just never visit your site anymore. Yeah, well. like if you're not on some big website that doesn't end up in some part of some big package, you're screwed. Yeah. You are yeah, so sure. screwed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I actually use that the best answer ever. HWBot and OC Sports site are very slow, and I still go there. Yeah, but it's it's a question of it's a question of monopoly. That's a different story. <laughs> that, that, that's the HW Bot server. Now imagine if the HW Bot server is being slow, and you have Comcast screwing you over on bandwidth. It's like you cannot even send back. It's gonna need you like two weeks to just upload a score. So that cannot work. Yeah. We go yeah. back to like um, the, the other like, issue is like a lot of these internet service providers, especially in America, they also are TV providers. 
right? Yeah. So most of the ISP and, are TV providers indeed. Yeah. And that's a pretty massive conflict of interest because they have their TV services, right? And Which, of course, will, you will not pay more both. for these ones. <laughs> right? They'd love to show you a TV package. So it's like they'll throttle stuff just to basically, like, they'll... Actually, Netflix had an issue with this already. With Comcast. They had issues with Comcast. There Comcast says... actively yeah. slowing down Netflix data because, well, Netflix was competition for their uh, TV uh, yeah. providing, uh, for their TV yeah. services. Yeah. Yeah. So basically net neutrality going away means, you know, your internet might not get outright blocked to certain sites. It'll just be very, very slow. Very slow. Which is even worse. Because you will, That's just frustrating. You will <laughs> consciously move out from it and you will make the choice to not go there anymore, which is yeah. way stronger than actually flat out blocking things. Because we know that yeah. if you block stuff, people yeah. will just get around it. Yeah. Like we know and that with the I VPN saw a and few all that. People, so I recently read a few posts from people about like setting up virtual private networks and virtual private servers so that they can, you know, access sites uh, like externally. Uh, they can just block your encrypted traffic all like well not block it but they'll just throttle the encrypted traffic anyway it's like oh we don't know what this is uh eh, slow it down it's slow so down. <laughs> it's there's no real way to get around this you know yeah. Yeah. um basically either all data is equal data or, or you're screwed some of your data is just you not going to be getting yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's going to make using the internet suck because suck. if you're not because this can go two ways. Either the service providers pay the ISPs into not throttling their data, or the ISPs force the users to pay to not have throttled data. Actually, and both ways, oh, and both both ways will mostly happen. And they'll probably do both because, you know, money is exactly, amazing. <laughs> both sides of so, both I mean, sides. keep in mind that, especially in North America, we still pay with a limited quantity of data. Unlimited is not the norm here. Yes. I mean, f for me, it is. I mean, when I use 2.4 terabyte a month, I need to have unlimited. That's that's not possible otherwise. But the thing is, unlimited is not the thing. There's people that have, like, cell phones. My, my cell phone, I have 4 gigs. I think that's I smash that most every, of the world every freaking month. I have just 4 gigs on my for, cell phone. For cell data, I like, I have the same kind of limits. But... For, and actually, if I went down to a cheaper internet package, I'd also have like a one terabyte or a half a terabyte. It's it's actually I think, it's actually not bad. Here it's a hundred gig. I think the smallest one they offer here is two hundred and fifty gig. Okay, a here month. okay here you will pay about forty bucks for the internet only, and for about hundred to two hundred gigs, both way wow. per month. What the hell? If you just watch YouTube, you smash this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Watch very low sure. quality YouTube. <laughs> I mean, so then you what you end up? You end up watching TV, which is the same provider that provides you the internet. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> the other issue is, um, you know, <clears throat> like one of the arguments put forth by the lovely people at the FCC is that the free market will take care of this. Except most of these ISPs have localized monopolies where it's like you either have this terrible company or no internet no well that's internet. The, that's yeah. the biggest and that's so, a very big issue in the us with comcast comcast is the only provider for some for of the Vinci, various, Vinci yeah Vinci. well actually like if you look at the there's like maps of the various providers and there's just like like this block is comcast this one is time warner this one is that's comcast me. this one is time warner you yeah. know and it's like you can't get the other lot like you can't switch companies because you're 10 20 meters in the wrong area yeah you know? and so it, it's like there, there's no like you just need regulation to get rid of this kind of stuff like this is what regulation is meant to deal with when companies start to screw you over because there's no competition they've just been greasing too many pockets too long and actually and they've been blocking google from stretching out google fiber as yeah, well google fiber so is it's like expensive. so for you have this really uncompetitive market and now you're just going to lift all regulation on like these companies which have already been, done horrific like awful shady things in the past like yeah great idea you're you're going to destroy the internet um for the americans luckily the eu has pretty strong rules about net neutrality but i guess i won't ever be watching anything on youtube again 
<laughs> at least not anything on not anything on YouTube's American servers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I don't want to. I don't want to live in the world where we can like. You have to treat that equally for any kind of traffic. Yeah, for sure. Okay, it's, guys. It's the um, result that we all share, and it should be equal, and that's that. Yeah, yeah, that's that. That's yeah, and actually, very good point from Yosa. No net neutrality, no free porn. Yeah, <laughs> Pornhub is one of the biggest. Yeah, actually, porn. Pornhub did did something. I I saw that but that passing by as well. It's like, hey, if you want to access the site, tell your provider you need access to this package. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. oh, that's that's genius. <laughs> That's genius, yeah. The oh, EU okay. has good rules about internet. That is so comforting for Britain. <laughs> you, yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I guess I might just move out if you screw the internet up here as well. <laughs> oh, and by the way, privacy laws much better in Europe than in UK, and that's yeah. yeah and I, the I worst know, is but... yet to come. <laughs> Well, yeah, Brexit. The United States right. will set a very bad precedent, and other other countries are going to follow this. And it's just like this is. Let's let's make sure that this does not happen. So you guys, you can yeah. you can go to battleforthenet.com or battleforthe.net or something. I can't remember the exact uh, link for the website. Uh, battleforthenet.com. That's it. And. I know it's mostly for the US guys. I know there's a lot of people watching from the US, the show, especially on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, just just go get, just act. It's it's not not much, but you have to spam your 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 own people. And if that happened in your country, uh, be it in Europe or Asia or anything, do the same. Reach out to the people that yeah. can have the chance to vote on that. It's very important to keep uh, the net neutrality going on. All right, folks. America, go after your congressman. <laughs> Tell them this ain't cool. N not running after them with a gun, okay? Huh? Just, just, just <laughs> <laughs> calmly and slowly call them and explain them it's not okay to do this. All right, folks, it was a very nice show. Um, highly appreciate. There will not be any after party today because I'm actually late to go out to uh, my birthday party tonight. So Happy that. Birthday. Thank you. Turning thirty is not easy, so yeah, I have to do it. Oh, you're whoa, old. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa. come on! <laughs> you just made me feel old. Speaking of somebody now. who just... Who's wait, I'm 20, right? Yeah, I'm 20. You're old. Oh, really? <laughs> you're just 20? Damn! I'm really old. Okay, Please, so let's I'm, make a deal. In 10 years from now, you need to have my job. <laughs> Actually, no. In 2 years from now, you need to have my job. Wait, what is your job? Good question. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thank you guys on the chat. I appreciate all the birthday wishes. That's cool. Thanks. All right. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a like. If you like the content, if you want more information about something, let us know in the comments. If you watch this on Twitch, give us a follow. Uh, I would like to uh, give a shout out to some of the guys uh, that we saw tonight. Uh, Gary Palm, uh, Modfinus311, Ruben991, uh, Dodoc, Paranin Professor. Stone Anvil and Berserk Bunny. Thank you very much, guys, for, for the support. Uh, if you want to support us even more, uh, there's a donation page that is now open. You can find the link on our twitch.tv overclocking TV channel. There's the donate button. Click on it and just uh, I mean, send your donation tips, whatever. Uh, everything is appreciated. Uh, we don't do that for work. Uh, we do that for fun. So everything that we get will be tuned back into, uh, put back into the, the streams and actually supporting the content as well. Thank you very much, everyone. We're going to catch you next week. Should be about the same time. So 4 p.m. instead of 5 p.m. And after uh, next week, we'll see uh, exactly the, the time that we uh, will be adjusting for. Uh, thank you, Bill Zoitz. Thank you, Toulouse, for your time tonight. I appreciate oh, that. Pleasure. It's been great to be here. Perfect. Until next time, keep pushing keep it. Pushing it.